Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? We are back and we're in Greece. We're on a cruise. We're also hitting Italy and Turkey. So let's get into it. In this video, I'm going to be going over 10 things to know before going on a Mediterranean cruise. As I said already, this cruise was through Italy, Turkey, and Greece. So that is where you will see footage from, but all of these items I will be discussing apply to any cruise in the Mediterranean. Item one is getting to your port city more than one day in advance. This will allow for you to recover from any jet lag and keep you from missing the cruise itself due to any delays or cancellations. For instance, on this trip, I had booked a flight for my brother and I to arrive in Rome 24 hours prior to the cruise departure and our initial flight from Denver to Dallas was canceled. Plus arriving early will give you the chance to explore your port city too. We're gonna be on here for the next 12 days. We have so many places we're gonna see. I'm very, very, very excited. Before we get to item number two, I did want to let you guys know that I will be tagging different locations, activities, and landmarks, and all that stuff on the screen for you guys and in the description below so that if you see something that looks really cool and you want to book it for your cruise, you know what to ask for, or if you're just traveling through the area and you want to check out a specific place or experience, you know what that is without having to be on a cruise ship to do it. If y'all have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Today we are in Tornina, Sicily. It is an absolutely beautiful village on the side of a cliff overlooking the ocean right up into gorgeous gorgeous mountains olive trees like it's just so beautiful that's all i can say about it item two is to do research on each of the ports to see how far away the landmarks are that you want to see from the port and then booking a car or tour to take you to those landmarks a lot of the stops in the mediterranean require passengers to take a ferry from the ship to land and then there's a lot of walking or just distance in general to the big or most notable landmarks in some cases like in sicily here you would never be able to walk to tormina but it is an iconic stop on the island if you're booking a tour try and book one with multiple stops if you're up for a long adventure day. We spent the whole day on the ship. Today was a day at sea. It's been a beautiful day at sea. We spent all day by the pool and Marty got a good sunburn. <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> and then we checked out a specialty restaurant called Le Petit or Petit. Very, very, very cool. We might try one more specialty restaurant, which you have to like pay extra for those, but sometimes it's cool to have that experience. And Le Petit is a very good experience. Now we are at Sunset bar. Looking at this fabulous sunset, it's freaking beautiful. Every sunset that I have seen, even the sunrises I've seen, are incredible. Tomorrow we're going to Ia, and we're just gonna like explore it on our own. Do that kind of stuff. It's gonna be so awesome. I've never been to Greece. I'm very, very excited. Book later dining times on the ship is item number three, and this is because excursions run late or really long, and sometimes it's hard to get back on the ship and ready for dinner at an early dinner time. Also, having a later dinner will give you the opportunity to try some of the local food while you're out exploring, and you won't have to worry about saving space for a meal on board. Item number four is to bring a jacket for the evenings, but also be prepared for the heat during the day. If you're cruising in June like we did, I promise you that you'll be melting during the day, but chilly at night. Not only do the temps drop, but it can get quite windy too. And item number five is to book relaxing excursions or days where you have none so that you can reset. There isn't much distance between ports in the Mediterranean, so cruises in this part of the world can be packed tight and become really exhausting really quickly. The days at sea can be really relaxing or they can be just as exhausting as the port days because there's so much to do on board as well. So make sure you give yourself a little bit of time to truly enjoy somewhere that you are. For instance, we took the opportunity in Mykonos to just have a beach day where we were given lunch and a couple of snacks and the transportation to the beach. It honestly was perfect for our kind of mid-stop through the cruise. We are in Istanbul. We are getting ready to go into the older sister in the city. It is very, very chaotic here on another level. We've already seen a couple mosques, which is awesome, but also very chaotic. Come prepared, especially if you're waiting, cover your knees, or your arms, your hair, all that good stuff. Um, I didn't know all that exactly, so I had to buy a scarf. It's all good. We made it through. Don't underestimate the intensity of this campaign. We are already on item number six, and I Item six is to research smaller or private tours to avoid larger groups in bigger cities. In Istanbul specifically, we were in a large tour group and there were other large tour groups around us all day. Plus the people that live in the city itself, making for a very chaotic and overwhelming experience. It was hard to take anything in. So if you want a more low key experience in a bigger city, be sure to book with a smaller tour or just go out on your own. We have made it to the bazaar and if you don't know what this is, it's a crap load of stores. Over 2000 stores and I think my brother just said our guide said over 200 streets that spreads, which is banana. Oh my gosh, I just walked around a corner. It goes on and on and on and on. Understatement of the century. 
I am currently getting ready to go to bed at 1 a.m. for the umpteenth time. Actually, this is probably the earliest time I've gone to bed since we've gotten on this cruise ship and we're having an incredibly good time. Literally right now I'm going to bed looking at Istanbul. Like, what is my life? Tomorrow we have the second day of our Istanbul tour. We're going to a palace and going on a boat ride on the Bosphorus and like, watching some carpet making things and stuff. I will see you in the morning. I should have known after reading the description for this excursion about Turkish rug making that I would turn into a sales pitch, but I didn't, so I'm here to tell you. Item number seven is to watch out for excursions around a physical item like rugs or perfumes. Almost any excursion mentioning a physical product like rug making or perfume making will turn into a sales pitch. If you're into that, cool, but it wasn't for me and I wish I would have known. This is the same place we were at yesterday with like a million people. Look at it. Absolutely no one. Number eight might be a bit obvious, but be sure to learn a little bit of the languages for each country you visit. This was the first time I had gone to a country without learning things like hello, please, or thank you, and it made for a lot of awkward experiences. Learning a few basics will give you a bit more of a connection to the people of the country you're visiting, and it will show them that you have an extra layer of interest in their language or culture. Number nine is to bring your actual passport off of the ship with you, as a copy isn't accepted in some instances to get you back on the ship. I personally have never needed a passport to get back on a cruise ship, but I find it is smarter to have it on you in case something happens and the ship leaves without you. Something extreme would have to happen for the ship to leave without you, but I have heard of it happening, so it would be better safe than sorry so you can get home without any hassle. If you're nervous about carrying your passport or anything valuable while exploring, I recommend getting a fanny pack and wearing it across your chest. I have linked some of my favorites from Amazon in the description for you below. Woo, we are heading back to the ship after our day in Kusadasi. I don't think I'm saying that correctly in the slightest. Overall, a very, very beautiful day. This is a wildly different experience than Istanbul. I think I would more than likely come back here if I came back to Turkey. It just seems a little bit more friendly and like not as insane. Well, we made it to Athens. This place is incredibly hot, incredibly busy, but so next level, beautiful, and just feels like, you know, a little piece of extra culture at every turn. And I'm about to walk down the street now, but we are at the Acropolis, and we're checking out the Parthenon. I always want to say Pantheon, and then it's like, and I'm thinking it. But we are getting ready to check it out. I definitely never thought that I would get here. It is wild. And last but not least is item number 10, and that is to come prepared with motion sickness medications or remedies like the wristbands and the patches and stuff. The Mediterranean isn't typically rocky enough for you to get sick, that's not what it's known for, but the ferries to and from the ship can get a little crazy. I am a sufferer of motion sickness and I didn't think I would need anything for this cruise, but I definitely did for the ferry rides. And that is it for this video, thank you so much for watching. If you found it helpful at all, please hit the thumbs up button as it helps me so much and don't forget to subscribe before you leave. I hope you found this video super helpful in planning your experience on a cruise in the Mediterranean and I will see you on the next adventure. Bye!